What's going on guys? This is JT here. We finally have the first set of patch notes for the first update in Diablo Immortal. Now I will say I have seen in the Blizzard post that all the major content and not only that we also have a class change coming at the end of July. So that is huge news. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get into it. Look at the changes. I believe they buffed some characters and maybe nerfed some characters. I don't know. I saved this for you guys and I have not read anything yet. So so let's go ahead and get into it. Now, if you guys don't know, I do go live on Twitch every single day. I am a heavy pay to play well. I currently have 7,340 residents and I'm going until I max out my account and do all sorts of fun things. Have a great community on Twitch and that is at twitch.tv slash JT is all business. All right. So we got Diablo Immortal first post launch content update. It looks like all this stuff is not necessary to read, to be honest. Let's see. We got the Season 2 Battle Pass. All right, yeah, okay. So here's the codex right here. The new boss, which we all know about. We have a weekend event. Okay, so we'll check that out. What's to come, balance changes, and also bug fixes. So exactly what I expected. So here is the new Battle Pass right here. This looks pretty cool. I mean, why not? New Battle Pass. Seems like uh, Battle Pass is always good for players that just basically want to spend five bucks a month and get all kinds of additional rewards, right? Plus also a lot of experience is included with that, along with, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Legendary Crest as well. So let's see, what do we got here? Any type of information. Mainly the key things I'm looking for is, okay, so we got Empo Empowered Battle Pass includes rank rewards uh, from the free standard Battle Pass, but also unlocks an Empowered Track that provides additional rewards at each rank. Plus, we'll receive the Fearsome Weapon Cosmetic unlocked at rank 1. So, we got new cosmetics as well. Not bad. We also got Collector's Empower Battle Pass. Gives you access to all the rank reward cosmetics. Plus, okay, so if you want to spend the $15, you can spend the $15 for the additional stuff. We also got this Season 2 Battle Pass. It runs until August 4th. Okay, so we got basically another month worth of Battle Pass. So basically new seasons mean new Battle Pass in this game. I believe that's how it's going to go. Here is what the new boss looks like. If you guys haven't seen the video, I posted a video of actually killing this boss on the YouTube channel as well. So we're going to go ahead and skip all that. We got the Hungering Moon Weekend Event. So let's check this out. The moon is hungry and it demands blood. Perhaps even yours. Your adventure gaze upon the moon. Bask in its hollowed glow, heed its howl of su sustenance, and lunar lace blessings you shall bestow. Okay, fulling, fulfilling the moon's demands will earn you moon silvers, which can be traded for blessings. Okay, after acquiring seven blessings, you will have carried enough goodwill with the moon to trade these for random reward. Very interesting. I wonder what those rewards are. Are we going to see some Eternal Crest? Or are we going to see something good for the people? We also got Offer. Enough Blessings. The Moon will pre present you with its favor. We welcome Brave Adventures. Okay, so this starts July 15th. So in nine days, we will have the new Hungering Moon Weekend event. That seems like a lot of fun. Excited for that. What's to come? All right, so what's to come? Blizzard and the Diablo Immortal team would like to thank you for spent, defend, or spent time defending the Sanctuary. This patch is just a start. <laughs> that is correct. All the fake news, all the bad, and all the, the madness that's been going on with this game. This patch is just a start. It looks like Blizzard is on the up of making this game better for everybody and reading feedback from what it sounds like to me. We've been collecting suggestions and feedback for the game since launch and look forward to sharing more updates in future patches. While we don't want to entirely spoil the fun, we will leave this with you. We have a class change coming along other additional new content is coming your way in the next update later this month. So before the month is even over, we got new content coming plus a class change. That is big news. So here's what we got for balance changes. It looks like Wizards got Arcane Wind. Damage increased from 52 or 54 and 72 fully charged to 60 and 80 fully charged. Not bad. So Wizards need a buff, man. We also got Arcane Wind Legacy. We have damage increased from 57 to 60. So this looks like only buffs and increases the range as well. Lightning Nova, damage increased and multi-hit down. So all buffs for Wizards. Wizards only saw buffs with this patch note. We also got Monks. 
Exploding Palm damage, not explosion, increased as well. Range changed to, oh, actually it lowered the range barely, I believe. Oh, wait, no, to three times 4.5. It's a rectangle. Okay, they completely changed the way Exploding Palm worked. That is very interesting. We also got Exploding Palm Legendary, Scolding Storm. The damage of non-explosion increased from 17.5 to 25, along with the same thing. So basically, it looks like Exploding Palm got a buff, in my opinion. So, not bad. As far as bug fixes, this is what I thought the, the update was mainly going to be about. You know what I mean? We need to see bug fixes. It looks like we have... Gameplay features which adjusted monster spawn logic to reduce the effectiveness of standing in one place in the library of Zoltan Cool. Okay, that's nice. Adjusted the way auto-targeting will work after a player casts the same skill over sustained duration. That I noticed that a lot with my Whirlwind. Um, so that's good that that has changed. The previous two changes were made to remove the reward of repeating a small rotation of attacks while standing in one place, such as someone as botting. So basically, they're reducing the amount of botters that can be botting uh, by fixing certain things. That's very smart. I mean, if you guys don't know, if you, just, if you saw my, uh, my video, Blizzard has already been banning players, even players that spent money for botting in this game. So do not bot. We also got updated the ability description of Chip of the Stone Flesh. Each time you cause an enemy loss of control. Wow. That is pretty beast, man. So if you fear somebody, anyway, you stun them, whatever the case may be, Chip of the Stone Flesh is going to be a highly sought out for gem here in the near future, I would assume. All right, so we also got fixed in issues where some class classes would not play audio. Okay, that's good. I'm happy about that because I know whenever I entered dungeons, I actually lost my audio as well. Fix an issue that would cause resonance and combat rating to display a zero. I saw that. I ran into that as well. Fix an issue that caused doorways. So we got a bunch of issues fixed here. I don't need to read every single one of them. Y'all can see them right here. Remove the Paragon level requirements for some quest. Okay. Fix an issue. Chest of Glories. Not shared with all party members. All right. So let's see. Let's keep on going down. So we got Cycle of Strife. We got found some issues in the shadow contracts that would immediately fail upon request of the zone. Okay, so this is just nothing but bug issues. What do we got for Battlegrounds here? Adjusted the Battleground preparation UI so that players are properly randomized between attack and defense. Previously, players could determine whether they were attacking based on this UI. Yes, if you were placed in the top of your Battleground, you were automatically on offense. And if you were placed at the bottom of your Battleground, you knew that you were on defense. So what the problem is, is people were basically queuing up for BGs. And then if they were not on defense, they'd cancel the BGs. Because the BGs, the way it's formatted, is honestly easier if you're on defense. And the only reason why it's easier is if you're on defense is because the offensive teams in this game don't really communicate and they're randomly just running around with their chickens with their head cut off, right? So they don't really do the objective. Now, do we actually know if it's better to be on offense or defense? I don't think we have determined that. However, we do know that it's unbalanced whenever you just go into a random pug, so to speak, and play with seven other random players that aren't communicating. It's hectic on offense and a lot of people don't know how to follow the objectives properly, right? So that tends to be an issue. Added a mechanism to prevent players from attacking the Ancient Heart before the three phases has begun. I didn't even know that was an issue, so I'm glad they fixed that. Fix an issue that would cause players to be put back into queue after entering a battleground. Okay, so then we got also some NPC fixes, some UI fixes, some visual fixes, and let's go, boys! This game is coming out in Asia tomorrow. Let's go, baby! One time for Diablo Immortal. I'm pumped up about the updates. we got future updates coming at the end of July. Like I said, if you guys have not checked out the Twitch channel, check me out at twitch.tv slash business. Anyway, guys, hope y'all have an amazing day. Peace out, fellas.